Patrick. And I'm Irish, and so that's how I got into the fairies. Um, fairies are super important to Irish people <laughs> because if you don't listen to them, like they can essentially mess up your entire life. <laughs> and uh, so this is the Fairy Hollow, and it's like my little passion project. And it's somewhere where I can create my own art and just. I always wanted to make beautiful things. That's all I wanted to do when I was little. I always told my mom, I just want to make beautiful things. And I want to help beautiful people, inspire people. So this is my way of doing it, creating a space that I would want to hang out in all the time. The most magical place I could think of. And I think about fairies, I feel like they would live in here. And I really feel like when I go home at night, like they come out and it's full force. So it's just like paying like respect to them and always making sure that they have a place to go if they want to, right? When it becomes winter time and you take logs inside or you do whatever you do in the winter, if, if you take something out of nature that a fairy could live in, you bring it inside essentially to make sure that they still have a place to live. So you just kind of want to make sure that they're respected the entire way um, because when you don't respect the fairy energy, then that's when you start breaking crap in your home. They come in, they spill the milk, like it's the whole thing, right? So I make things that inspire me, stained glass, crystals, mushrooms, anything I can think of to do with fairies. But I also wanted it to not just be like in your face fairy. Like I didn't want to make things only related to fairies. I wanted to make everyday items that could, people could bring home that inspire them, that maybe they want to welcome fairy energy into their home, but they don't want to be, here's like a giant stained glass fairy to hang in your window. Like maybe here's a little tea light holder with a little fairy on it, just to bring something into your home, something simple. And so that's kind of what I do, but I also make like, the polymer clay, clay fairy doors I have over there. I make the cement ones. I make them basically of whatever I can think of. Anybody can create this. This is like something that's important is every anybody can come and create this. Like this is just stuff you can buy in everyday stores and like even the dollar store and stuff and you just keep putting more and more and then all of a sudden it turns into this, you know? So <clears throat> here we are right now at the Crystal Cave Artisan Village and this will continue to grow and grow. But personally, like I love having tiny spaces. I love tiny spaces, but I would love to have on my own property. So we bought a farm up here. It's about 200 acres. It's kind of my dream and now my husband's dream because he sees how much I love it to create the fairy farm. So right now like, even he calls it the fairy farm and he'll get me like little fairy statues. This one fairy that stays on a stump on our driveway and her name is Elaine and she watches people come in and out and you know and um, so the barn will be converted into a place that people can shop and then we'll convert the land around into gardens with fairy statues and eventually little twinkly light paths and trees with doors and stuff on them and it's going to be a really cute place that will hopefully you know help inspire people you know what i mean like i just i just want people to know that anybody can create anything that they want mm -hmm. yeah that's like a big lesson i learned this past year like you can do anything and you're creating everything with whatever you think about and if you want to create something good then you better start thinking about good stuff yeah. and i um up here, when I moved up here, I knew that I was gonna, you know, find some way to do what I wanted up here. So I did that and um, it just kind of keeps growing and growing. And while I'd love to have a tiny little shop like this, I love it and I love how I've decorated it and whatever. Um, I wanna be able to it to grow and keep growing, keep growing and, mm -hmm. and you know, and be somewhere that people come specifically to see, you know? So I think it'll be really magical and it's just gonna be, like the picture I have in my head is freaking cool. <laughs> it's gonna be able to like raise like, you know, consciousness and aware, like the vibration of people and make them like happy. And I, I, I never I never resonated with those like the get rich quick things where you're just mm -hmm. trying to like make people buy things. I always say like, please help bring people in here that either find inspiration or find something that they might like want to take home, but not necessarily like, please make me have like a huge sales day. You know, I don't, I'm not driven by sales. I just want to be here and meet people. And that's kind of my 
driving thing. Like, I just want to meet people like you. <laughs> and, like, yeah. and just meet people and talk to people and help open up their minds a little bit. Like, every single person can do whatever they want. And they control that by thinking positive things. And not even just positive things, like, just, just using correct verbiage, too. Like, mm -hmm. instead of saying, like, oh, I'm not very good at this. Well, that's an affirmation, right? So yeah, if you say I'm not good at this, like I, I'm, uh, I can't swim or whatever, you can always learn to swim. You yeah. Know? So like, I can't. Like, there's just too much. I can't do this. Or I can't do that. Like, you can do it. And you have to start it by accepting that you can do it and saying the proper words. You know. Mm -hmm. And being grateful. I think being grateful is a huge part of it too. My grandfather always said that um, he was religious, so he always said God provides for a grateful heart. And I believe that fully, like the universe will provide for you if you're grateful for what you have. Because if you can see all the good in your life, then it wants to give you more because it knows you deserve more kind of thing. I think when people think of fairies, like they think of this type of thing, right? And this is a great way to represent them because they have such fun, youthful energy. And you can, you can dance with the fairies, you can sing with the fairies. They're attracted to shiny objects. Like they want to have fun. And that's the part that... It brings a lot of people in but there are malicious fairies and there are mischievous ones and there are ones that want to play games with you and they want to play tricks just like people or other spirits and I think it's really important just to be able to respect them fully enough to know which is which there's a lot of like folklore and legends about how to interact with them don't say thank you to them because when you say thank you to a malicious fairy it means that now you owe them something and so once you owe them something then they can mess with you a little bit more kind of be around you more and they always say a lot of things they'll say is like um like the don't step inside a fairy ring and inside a fairy ring you don't come out yeah so essentially you're um transported almost into like the fairy realm and it's hard to get out and they and, and time time goes differently there like the fairy world there's like the all happy fairies and then there's the mischievous ones you know and i think a lot of them came from like europe like a long time ago and when pe before people really knew what everything was and maybe someone legit stepped inside a mushroom ring and you know maybe they accidentally ate a mushroom and died in it you know like it could be made from so many different things but um, I think it's still important just by keeping the what could be a false legend you know false information you're still like keeping the fairy energy alive and I just like to have stuff like that like I like to read a lot of, of the you know like don't say thank you don't accept any gifts from them because again if you accept like a gift then it's you you owe them something right or so there's like a story where they go in and they try to give them a thimble and then they, they say oh like thank you for the thimble but then then when they leave the forest bad stuff starts happening because now the fairies like have control over that life almost you know so it does have like a, a dark in life but so my mom, um, when you're a baby and like your parents are, have like a book for you and it says like, oh, this is how much you weighed and this is her name. So mine was Flower Fairies. And so I loved that book. Like it wasn't even a storybook. It was just like <clears throat> pictures of beautiful flower fairies. And so I would go through with my mom all the time. And my mom would tell me stories of when she was younger, how she would have one of her best friends, her her father was this beautiful man like he was the kind most kind-hearted man and he would take them out into the forest and he would lay like little sweets at the end of trees and stuff and be like oh the fairies were here and like whatever and so she always made a point to like always have our garden like beautiful and like have like cute little things in it and just so that that was like the weird part like she was really she was really into the fairy part but not so much into the spirits so it was it was great like my mom was always like and she was the one that got me into crystals too and and stuff so yeah she just always was very open to the fairy stuff and then the rest of it kind of was stuff that i just kind of did on my own like i always wanted to check out books about fairies or i always wanted to watch things with fairies in them even if it was just for a second just to get like a little glimpse of something and then the rest of that kind of just grew into always making spaces for it and and 
getting more books on it and reading because there's so much in the fairy world and that's the reason why I spelled the fairy hall the way I did with the f-a-e-r-i-e because it's an entire world it's like gnomes and mermaids and like just so many other like any any mystical like dragon like everything is just under this beautiful fantastical fairy name and that's what I wanted to do I wanted to create a place that could house all of those things I love I love all magical things like there's this there's a hawthorn tree that I knew about already but there's a hawthorn tree that is really directly linked to fairies it's so much so that in England if you cut down a hawthorn tree they would kill you they would like burn down your entire farm like you'd be killed because you disrespected the fairies so highly they had to like make you go away you weren't allowed to touch it you weren't allowed to look at it <laughs> i thought that was pretty intense and um when i moved up here we didn't really know too much about the area and we didn't really know much about our property but um i had this like feeling that i was gonna go out in the springtime and find a hawthorn tree and i found it on my property it was amazing and i was just so happy and um i go like i as much as I can it's pretty like far into it but um, it's it's so great to have like almost that confirmation that I'm doing the right stuff and sometimes like I get these weird feelings where like I'm like oh like am I am I exploiting the fairies <laughs> like you know like I don't want them to be mad at me but then like anytime I go and like try to talk about it it's just like no like we we want people to know about us we want people to know that we're here and um because they just want to they want to help too you know they do yes. yeah so if anybody wants to attract fairies or wants to open themselves up wants to see them um there's a couple different things that you can do you can you can create a fairy garden like you that you want to invite them into your garden or whatever um it can be any type of garden i would put just always put shiny things in it um even if you just buy something and paint it with sparkles or just something that reflect the light and there's also like different flower fairies too so uh, you can plant that specific flower that you want you know or create like a little mixture of glitter and it has rose petals and lavender petals in it because those are the fairies that i want to have hidden here so even if you can't plant it and you're like i don't know how to tend to plants just get you can even get dried buds so this is just literal this is all this is is um dried rose petals dried um lavender buds a little bit of um sparkles and um some essential oils so you can literally make something so simple put that wherever it is that you want them to be so now if you want to you can grab a little mirror from a craft store like just literally like a tiny little mirror um or you could find like a necklace with a mirror on it something to keep on you and that i feel helps because they want to look at themselves, they're attracted to shiny things, it reflects the light any which way you go, and it's just kind of like a beacon, like consider yourself almost like a lighthouse at that point, you know? So if they're all like, if there's a bunch of fairies in the area and they're flying around, like in the dark essentially, they're gonna to fly towards your little mirror. So one of my other like loves, like the whole literal astrological system and natal charts and stuff so i'll still be making cr like stained glass crystals and all of this kind of stuff that i have up in here unicorns and magical things but i'm also going to be doing series of um stained glass zodiac signs zodiac signs and even moon signs and risings and all this other thing all these other things and i want to start doing like people's actual signs you know what i mean so like i take you for instance and then i would create like a stained glass piece of your sun rising and moon sign so i want things to be personal and beautiful i want to make things that are so personal that you wouldn't be able to just go in and find them anywhere you know i try to make things i've never seen before and it starts with something that i have seen before and then it just kind of 
evolves into my own thing. And that's what happened with my trinket chargers too. So these are just, so they're antique glass dishes that you literally, I just buy them from the ReStore or wherever. Um, and I think they're beautiful and I, I've always had so many of them and I didn't know what to do with them. So when I started working with resin, I paint the bottoms. So both of these are painted. I paint the bottoms and I'll add sparkles and I make them with an intention. So this one is made with, um, I've painted the galaxy on the back. And so this one is supposed to help you with, you know, the universe has your back. So whatever you put in this at night. So let's say I take off my ring at night and I stick it in this, the, the crystals are going to charge whatever I have in this dish. So in the morning, when I put this ring on, I know that the universe has my back because it's been charged that way. And so I pick really high quality crystals. I find them, I hand pick them. They're not ordered from like a bag, you know? Um, and I set them in resin because when you squeeze a crystal, it, it actually like amplifies its vibration. And these are constantly being squished and squeezed by resin when they're setting because it's always gripping them tight. So this one has like an amethyst point and crystal quartz. And this one is all about abundance and prosperity. So this one will have a pyrite, honey calcite, and um, a quartz point. And this one has also a key in it. So that gives you the key to abundance as well. So I make a bunch of them. I just, I had, I used to have another one that was for self love and it had a little heart and a key in it. And I just try to make things that I kind of also struggle with. So I want other people to not struggle with that stuff. So yeah, instead of putting crystals in them because I, I was, I wanted a variation. This one has a tree of life and this one says, I believe in fairy. So this is resin and sparkles set in the bottom. And then I make these decals. I put the decal on and then I set more resin on top so that decal will never peel. So we just wanted to say thank yeah, you thank for you having so us Aww. and teaching us about fairies and showing us all your awesome stuff. I'm Honestly, just, like I feel so educated. Really? I feel so <laughs> I feel like, like energized yay! and like yeah, such like, good vibes in here. It's almost like a charging station. Oh, yes. I love that. Space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I feel really excited. Um, I thank you for like for speaking about fairies in a way that we can all understand. Yeah. Like it was very easy to follow you, um, and I've just found this to be so interesting. And I hope that you guys have found this interesting too. Yeah, and make sure to come visit Sarah at the Fairy Hollow, and we will link all of her um, social medias in the description as well as her address <laughs> so that you can come and visit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm so you. happy that you guys yes. like it in here. It's so love it. cool. We'll be back. 100%. Yes. You we'll guys all need feet. to see this with your eyes because the camera does not do it justice. No. You need to experience the feeling yes. of <laughs> being in this magical place. And we will be place. the first ones there when you open up. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, no, I would love to. Do video have part two yeah. at a new oh location. My God. That'd be amazing. Yes. I know. We're really excited for that. Thank you so much for watching this video and coming along with us to the Fairy Hollow. And remember that if you like paranormal content or if you like our content, make sure to subscribe and click your notification bell so that you get notified every single time that we post new content. And make sure to give this uh, video a big like. <laughs> Always remember to live your life with love and light. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.